Hello everybody, welcome to my new video about piano playing. My name is Greg Niemczuk and I come from Poland. Uh, I'm a classical concert pianist and today I have a very special topic that I want to discuss with you. Um, interpretation. The word interpretation which uh, is a little mysterious what it really is. Um, I want to make this video as simple and uh, straightforward as possible, so I will just show you uh, how important it is to interpret any piece of music, how to do it, what to do to interpret, um, what I think it is and what is the difference. Because I hope that after this video you all will be inspired if you play the piano. Um, you will be inspired more to uh, make any piece of music that you play as beautiful and, um, and uh, captivating as possible. So, I chose the second movement of Edward Grieg's piano sonata uh, in E minor because I think this is a perfect example. What I'm going to do now is first I'm going to just play notes for you, just how it's written, practically without any interpretation. And why I chose this piece you will see, because this is a perfect example of a piece of music that if we only play the notes it is not good. We have to interpret it, we have to make it our own, make it personal, subjective. Uh, we have to color this, what, what composer wrote, and then it becomes a masterpiece. So I hope you will agree with me. Let's start. I only play the notes now, how they are written. focus on one page. Uh, I'm sorry for this, what you've just heard, but this is um, just to show you the difference. The only thing I did, I did the dynamic that composer wrote, but um, no interpretation. Now what is interpretation? There is a lot of things um, that um, are hidden in this very important term. Of course interpretation, we all know what it means. Um, it's just like we have a text and we have to say the text, we have to interpret uh, in the sense that we have to put, I I'm always saying we have to put emotions to this. Uh, when we are actors or when we have some kind of speech to read, we cannot read this speech without uh, um, emotions, without feelings that we have, right? about this certain text. We have to feel them and we have to interpret, we have to make with our voice so that um, the listeners can hear what we feel. And this is very important. So now I show you, um, first I 
I interpret for you, of course, in one of the many ways, but I make, I make it beautiful. I make an interpretation and then after I play it for you, I will talk about it more um, with more details and deeper so that uh, you can understand how to approach this and how I approach it, okay? So. <laughs> sounds like a different piece uh, right of course and now a lot of things that I did were I mean all of them were inside between the notes between the notes not written in the score and of course every piece of music has this every single piece of music you can make your own and not copying anyone not copying me this vi video is not about copying me is this video is about how to find your own uh, way so if you want to make the most out of this video uh, take the score of second movement of Greek piano sonata it's not very difficult so you all can learn it and play it maybe even from the score I think um, this first page and try to follow me so that you can know exactly what I'm doing now I show you how I work with the interpretation and it goes with this movement and it goes with every other piece of music that I prepare for concerts or I just play. So, um, of course, the, the, the most important question that we have to ask ourselves is what is this about? What this music, uh, what image this music creates? What feelings this music creates in our hearts? So, of course, we have to check the tempo that composer wrote and anything that he wrote. He wrote cantabile and andante molto, so not, uh, not fast. A slow tempo, but not too slow as well. And cantabile, so singing. Singing is the key to good interpretation because we have to make the right hand sing. And how to sing on piano, I if you watch my videos you already know if you don't know the video about singing i strongly recommend you to find it on youtube uh, on my tutorials uh, there was a video about singing uh, singing is shaping a beautiful legato so of course we have to work with the right hand alone let's play the first phrase like it's written uh, without shaping no feelings no shaping nothing shaping meaning changing the touch now let's shape it so let's make a difference in touch so that we can hear for example the beginning and softer and now maybe crescendo and uh, more, less, more, 
less and less. Every note must be touched differently, every single one. And now how to do it? You can experiment. Y you should experiment. You should make, you should see what is the best for you, uh, how to shape this melody. If it's not written in the score, never mind. This is not, no composer in the world writes every single thing and every single bar because this is simply impossible. Music has to be alive. So we have to make this music alive. Uh, now, of course, singing. So we imagine how uh, we, we would sing it. So right hand alone is very important, but of course we have the left hand. Left hand must be very soft, very soft, just not disturbing the right hand. And this is this is the first thing what we are doing. But now and uh, the, the next thing very important is the the rhythm that in this kind of music, the singing cantabile music should never be exactly precisely with the metronome because if it is then it's not alive because our heart is not beating always the same way we are not used to these square things um, our feelings our soul our heart our body is always changing is always feeling um, hormones are changing right we constantly are uh, in the process of change so the same goes with music these changes has to be very subtle very small but of course you can experiment and you can start from bigger ones but always imagine how somebody would sing it so for example now I experiment <laughs> the mood this is something very deep very important what it brings us what what we feel you have to ask yourself the question what do you feel it's a C major chord so very bright but here it's a very difficult thing you have to use your imagination you have to imagine maybe a movie what happens in the movie that you hear this music or what happens what are emotions what is the image for some people it helps when they see a clear image. For some people it helps when they see colors. For me it helps when I feel emotions, when I feel what Greek tells me. Here we feel happy. We are happy, calm, we don't rush, we enjoy the moment. We feel sun shining inside our soul, inside our heart. And I want the audience, I want the, the listeners to feel exactly the same what I do. That's why I try to f imagine this feeling inside me, close my eyes when I know the piece for, from the memory and just I will transmit what I feel. harmonies here are are kind of normal except this one um, this makes in my heart a, a feeling of extreme beauty this is a mixture of minor of major a little jazzy chord this chord I want to make especially beautiful I do it by changing my touch to uh, touch that is more w with love in my heart not just you know touching so but I think the most
most important thing in this first line is singing, is shaping the melody and singing and the left hand soft. The second line, we have the, the same melody, but it's it's with octaves, it's higher, so the color is a little different, and the left hand is giving us a movement, but but is giving us uh, the feeling of a movement, but also a, a, a color. Uh, it, it, it goes down, so it's a little darker. And now here we have six notes going up, so what can we do? We have to think about the accompaniment now, how to interpret accompaniment. We have to make it, I I think with this kind of accompaniment we should always make a diminuendo going down. Yeah. Yeah. If we, do, if we play it exactly the same way, it's not beautiful. Uh, so we... And there must be a huge difference and space, a lot of space between the top and the bottom. Two different ways of touching the piano. So this one very soft, this very... only the top, the, 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 the pinky. Interpretation in this case is also talking with the composer. It's talking. You, you should play it 20 times, every time different way. You should experiment. Nobody listens to you when you practice. You can just you can just do stupid things in a way. You know what I mean? And you can hear, but you have to listen to yourself. If you cannot listen to yourself, you just should record these 20 versions and then listen which resonates with you the most. And then choose this one. Or you can also change. Um, if it's raining, you can play differently. If if it's sunny, you can play differently. But this experimenting and finding our own way that, that, that attracts us the most is always the best way. Never copy another pianist. Never copy. Uh, because it will be fake. It will not be yours. And the audience will always feel that. Let's Continue. Now here we have a beautiful melody, Cantabile. He writes again, Cantabile. Now let's play again only the notes. Flat, flat, right? No. So this is not music. Shaping again and thinking about it thinking about the tensions that this music creates and now what I feel is that the B, this B flat is more than is that, that C then again then Greek makes a crescendo here so I really love to make this a little um, um softer because then it starts again the same beginning of the motif now what is also here important is the rhythm one two three one two three. this is this is continuation but the left hand the, the, now it's like a waving a little and so and now we can we can all again make something with the tempo we, we have to be free here. We have to be alive. Like, so for example... Now here we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When we have this kind of notes in cantabile, in a beautiful music, we should never, we must never play them exactly like this. You never speak like this. Uh, even when we speak sometimes slower, sometimes faster, 
it's never exactly like a robot. And this is the proof that an artificial intelligence <laughs> cannot really play with feelings and well, may maybe in the future, but I don't think it will be real. Um, this, you know, mathematical way of playing this kind of music doesn't work. Uh, so we have to interpret this. You can do it your own way, but experimenting here is fun. It's so much fun. Whatever you want, you just do. But of course, you have to. The left hand has to just listen. But right hand can do what. In a way it's rubato, but about rubato I'm going to make another video because this is a long topic as well. But now, does it sound different? Of course, look. differently. First feel different. This for me is sunny like at the beginning but this brings some good memories. Good memories. This. Now I play you only the notes. If we just play like this, it's again like a robot. Here it's provoking us to do something with the rhythm. We can do a lot. <laughs> And of course, it's it's a romantic piece. It's a romantic music. It's a it's the 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 the, the, the most romantic period, right? Um, and a very young composer, in love, and um, so we are allowed to do it. Of course, this goes to uh, to the romantic pieces. What I'm telling you, you cannot do like this, and you cannot do anything that I'm doing here, playing Beethoven, you know, <laughs> playing Beethoven. Beethoven is something completely different. So maybe I should call this video uh, "How to Interpret Romantic Music," and uh, not any kind of music. I don't know, but uh, I hope you understand. Bach, of course, also, this is something something very different. So, uh, I think that's all. If you have any questions, comments, uh, if you have any, mm, maybe something that you want to enrich this video with, please write it down under uh, this video in the comment section. Thanks for watching until now. I really hope it is something new for you and inspiring and motivating and well good luck with interpreting music and making the music of great artists uh, as beautiful as it deserves to be <laughs>